I'm Kate Tattersfield and my zine is called The Fractured Nuance. Which takes poetry, prose, illustration and photography from contributors and it's usually based loosely around a theme. So the most recent one um, was based on hand, handwriting. So the whole thing um, has been handwritten by contributors and illustrated. Do I aim to have a successful um, printing business? Um, the answer is I'm not sure at the moment. It kind of started off as a small hobby. Um, so I have a full-time job at the moment, so I can only really focus on this in my spare time. Um, I'm hoping for it to become more successful as I go along, um, and it would be excellent if I could get to that standard. Um, but I'm just kind of seeing how things go at the moment, actually. Um, but it is great to kind of get more contributions in each time I put out a new issue um, and see it grow that way. I do everything myself, so reading the submissions and deciding who's going to be in the issue, putting it together and printing it as well. Um, I get it printed actually at a, at a professional printers, but I pay for it all myself. Um, and I've put together the website and everything too, so it's very much DIY. I got into the zine scene um, about three years ago when I moved to London. I hadn't actually heard of a zine until I moved to London and then I kind of went to a few of the different fairs and started to collect certain publications, for example, Chapes zine I really like. And then I kind of thought, I'd love to do something like this myself. Um, and it wasn't until I went to a Fair last May called DIY Cultures in London that I decided to just go for it um, because I, ju I just saw so many people there who had a similar thing to what I'm doing actually. Um, my job is I'm in teaching so I don't have a lot of spare time other than in the holidays to really focus on it. The first one was pretty much anything so I was just trying to build up a base and get submissions, so that didn't really have a theme. Um, the second theme was memory, because I wanted something that was going to be accessible as well. Um, so I had various short stories, poetry, and also photography in that issue. Number three is the handwritten. So I've got writing and illustration on various different topics for this one. And then issue four, which I hope to print in summer is on place so i'm asking people to send in one a4 of writing on any, any form alongside a photograph a black and white photograph to print side by side in the zine i'm i'm really inspired and i really like a zine called paper and ink so martin appleby is the editor of that and i met him at the first zine fair i went to um, and i've contributed to that zine as well so I very much look on that as an inspiration. And I think my zine is similar in some ways to that one. Um, but that's the joy about coming to things fairs like this. I'm always finding new things. And it's really good as well to, to kind of swap, do swaps at zine fairs and get inspiration and find out something new that I can add to my publication as well. I write about anything really. I tend to write poetry, although I've been trying to practice my short story skills more recently. Um, so it really depends on what zine or press I'm submitting to and whether or not they have a, a particular theme that they want their piece of writing to be on. So I would just say, start by creating a website, a Facebook page, um, connecting with other zines and kind of putting yourself out there and then just go for it. So I sell my zine on the website um, and also at zine fairs in and around London. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lisa, I'm the founder and art director of Now's Magazine and I come from Manchester. I started the magazine in 2013 as part of my master project at a uh, school of art in Manchester and um, I graduated as a graphic designer so my main focus was creating um, 
a box, a beautiful box that makes it attractive for people to think about mental health. And uh, so I had to, had to start from scratch. I didn't have any experience because I've never interned for a magazine. So I had to kind of learn, learn, do learning by doing it. So it was a very slow process, but um, I learned a lot about how to print it right, how to source my materials, how to get in touch with the writers, how to find interesting photographers and all that. So um, from there it's grown. So now it's got quite a wide audience and people who are interested in mental health and also people who uh, like beautiful design. So hopefully I um, created a crossover between the two um, to just um, make people more aware of what other people go through and create an uh, open-minded society or uh, contribute to that. I try to approach mental health from different um, directions in each issue so it's not very um, uh, it's very broad in a way but in the end it comes back to mental health so in, in each issue we discuss one theme the last one was titled uh, worlds apart and i was hoping to get submissions in from people who look into how's mental health seen in different societies or how's, how was it seen 50 years ago and uh, how does it all connect in the end? So these different issues explore the broad, very broad theme of mental health and hopefully you get like a little collection, like an encyclopedia of themes that have to do with mental health. It's like my heart's really in, in it. It's like if I could only do that, I would happily do it. But because it's... Um, coming, it's not making any profit. We managed to pay our contributors a little fee and um, we can maybe save up a little for the upcoming issue, but um, it's nothing to make money off. It's totally like dedication of all the contributors and of the team who helps produce the magazine as well. I think often uh, because there's so many publishers and so many little zines out there that often it's hard to stand out, um, p convince people of the quality of your work, because sometimes, um, at least in the graphic design um, circles, people look a bit down on you when you say you make a zine, because it's kind of like, oh yeah, a little zine, it's kind of your personal thoughts and it doesn't have to do anything or much with um, with a wider audience. So I think uh, it'd be nice to just be established as the, the people who print Now's magazine and also support our contributors if they want to publish more of their work to just get it out and I don't know, make, help them make um, leave a footprint. We've got a risograph in our studio and we print all our publications in the studio ourselves. And then uh, our team helps collate and I've got a friend at university through her I can use the big industrial trimming machines and so it's all really handmade. Publishing um, poetry and running a small press is very fun, it's really hard work and sometimes people don't really realise how much work goes into editing. I'm submissions editor so I choose which poets we're going to work with and then help the poets to develop their, their poems and finish them off. And sometimes I spend so much time doing it that I don't get to write on myself for my own work. And it's very satisfying when the poems or the collection is finished 
um, but you don't always get the credit for the amount of effort you've put in to get that up to scratch and you have to step back because it's not your work. <laughs> it's sort of frustrating sometimes. But then when it's all published and uh, it does well, it's, it's wonderful. I feel as though I have a responsibility as well to, we want in Hester Glock Press to um, publish uh, as many men and women and uh, at the moment we're two men ahead and we've got two female poets with their collections nearly finished, which is exciting. Um, and uh, we're closed for submissions at the moment because when, when the submissions start coming in, it gets very, very intense and there are so many um, big manuscripts to look through and um, it's very time consuming and difficult to keep up with. If you have like 40 manuscripts to go through, it's... Uh, um, yeah, it takes a bit of time, but, but it's, you know, it feels like a very wonderful and privileged position to be in, to, to see, see that work. It's a very serious business and it needs um, lots of serious consideration because people pour their hearts and souls into their poetry collections. Do we do our own stapling? We did um, make, pulled at the printing side of it and the edit, the um, proofreading and the typesetting and um, he has been making handmade books and we've been printing and um, stapling and cutting he's done that but we're moving over to um, print on demand now because making handmade books is very time consuming it is a labor of love and I don't take a wage for my part in the work I do it completely voluntarily, and uh, which makes it a bit problematic if I've got 14 manuscripts to go through because I have to go to work as well. It's shocking that creative people don't get paid, but there is also a strata, social strata of who's going to get paid and who isn't, and it's the same old class struggle, gender struggle, race struggle. Yeah, running a small press, um, of the mechanics of running a small press, it's um, it's it's a basically a one-man operation. Uh, Dom who uh, runs the gig night, and he um, he's he's uh, basically kind of started out with a limited edition of a hundred copies, uh, and we've signed numbered them, and then he's going to bring out a standard edition on uh, Amazon, um, kind of print on demand, uh, basically. Um, and so the initial copies we've been selling at gigs, and um, it's kind of not too much cost involved in it. But so it's a bit a few upfront costs, but he's put that up and uh, starting this press. And uh, basically, it's been a 50-50 split. Um, so I mean, he's put up the, the initial money, and then I kind of do I do a lot to promote it as well. And he, he puts on a gig night every month, and then I kind of go around London and. Uh, going to various gig nights and selling the book there and kind of getting reviews as well in, uh, with various magazines and uh, Adam of course being very helpful um, and of course coming come to places like this, the Inzine uh, Festival and it's great to kind of meet people, get, make contacts, uh, so yeah it's been great. Inzine, it, well Inzine Festival is, um, it's, it's kind of um, it's kind of good to do it in a different, because I'm normally going to uh, open mics and features being featured on a bill. Uh, this is something a bit different, so and it's kind of good then to have a stall and kind of get to meet people and uh, chat to people about it. So, you know, it's, it's good good to kind of do something a bit different. So, whichever you like, just take it on one side. Uh, my name is Rhys Finley. I'm the head or publisher or producer of, I don't know what the word is, for Damn Dirty Comics. And we distribute comics, graphic novels, underground magazine, a podcast, a website, a YouTube channel, you name it. Yeah, I've been a huge fan of comic books all my life and a year ago I was working a really nasty job, you know, selling loans to people and putting people in debt and it was, it was misery inducing and it got to the stage in my life where I was, I was really unhappy and I knew why and I decided to go out there and fix it. I wanted to do something with my life and that was make comics. So I sat out there to do it and that's just over 12 months ago now and so much has happened and it's been life changing. I'd love to stay with myself one day because nothing, nothing is more romantic than the idea of sitting there 
stapling and printing hundreds of comics, but no, unfortunately I got a professional printer to do these. And while it is quite expensive, you know, you can't deny the quality that they do deliver. We're probably not going to get rich and famous, but we can have a good time trying. Much to my fiance's dismay, there is a huge stack of boxes of unsold comics in the bedroom. But it's, it's slowly going down and it's, you know, we can't have stockrooms, but like I say, it's all part of the fun. But it, it, we are stocked in shops as well, you know, in Coventry, you know, comic shops like the Astro Gypsy are super supportive and I go as far as Forbidden Planet in New York City, you know, one of the biggest comic book shops in a city that is synonymous with superheroes and comic books. You know, I think small press and indie and all this underground stuff is definitely on the rise and it is going a lot more into the public eye. I'm a painter and photographer, currently based in Leamington Spa, and I've created a special book for this event, which is called Anorexia, which is, explains what it's like living with the mental health issue and what things can help you uh, better your condition. So I did include inside a lot of my photographs and a lot of thoughts that go through your mind when you're living with anorexia. And that's what I'm presenting today at the pod. Yes, I do all my own printing. I do a lot of printing of postcards and also books. I'm currently working on a new book, which is also uh, having to do a little bit with mental health issues. I've asked a lot of people what would they advise friend of theirs who has a mental health issue and uh, the answers are quite interesting so I'm collect collecting them in this book which deals a lot about spirituality. It's a lot of photography but also words and interviews with different people. I did uh, MA Masters, Master of Arts in Coventry University uh, speciality marketing and I did four years public relations before that. I photograph mainly people uh, because uh, I find them the most fascinating and interesting uh, subject and also I find that um, I identify myself as a professional soul catcher. I try to see what's inside a person and how this is shown in the movements they have, in the clothes they wear and the way they behave when they're in their natural environment. I just want to feel as light as a feather. Um, that's a thought that was uh, going through my mind a lot when I was suffering from anorexia. Basically, you want to feel empty. You don't want to have any food. Um, I used to wear clothes to size bigger because I didn't want people to see how fat I am because I'm think I was thinking I was extremely fat even though I wasn't really, I was only 40 kilos at that time and my health was quite deteriorated. I was hiding food all the time and I was trying to give people the impression that I'm eating a lot while well, actually I wasn't eating anything at all and I often felt dizzy. Um, and I really like this feeling uh, when you haven't eaten for a couple of days and you're past the feeling of hunger and you don't feel hungry anymore, you just feel serene in a way. Um, and when people were telling me that I'm too thin, I was always thinking that they're doing lies and they're just trying to feed me and I was thinking that I was actually, actually fat. She's so beautiful, I want to look like her. It's also the comparison with other people, when, as well as like when you see models or some really skinny girls and you want to be like them because that's the role model that society presents you. That's what you think is beautiful for yourself and that's what you want to, be lo to look like. And often you, you suffer from depression, you don't want to go out because you feel fat and you don't want people to laugh at you for being fat. And it's not that you wish to die, it's not like I want to kill myself because if you want to kill yourself you're just gonna go and kill yourself. It's just that you don't care if it happens in the process. Change the way you think, you, want, you have to want to get better and nobody can make you feel better. 
and that's why a lot of psychologists are not able to help people because if you don't want to help yourself nobody can help you